A lot of our board members are away in Myanmar today trying to cover the elections that are coming up. So I've been given the task of undertaking the, the moderation of this event. Thank you all for coming here. First things first, I just overheard some people t asking me, is the FCCT still at the Dusitani? No, we have moved, moved nearly two decades ago. Please become a member if you're a member earlier. We more than welcome your support and we'll be more than happy to take you on board. First things again on, on, on the agenda, we have a book launch on Thursday at 7 p.m. November 5, that's tomorrow. And our last movie night of the year, we have a movie night every month, literally every Monday. Please get on our bulletin if you're not. We have movies from across the world and for a change of late, we have had free food and free drinks. So there's a catch. Uh, as long as you remember, you'll get all the information. So there are forms out there, you can just take it. Today, we have, ha we have the pleasure of welcoming Kuncharam Pon, who does not need introduction to, to all of us here. Uh, Kuncharam Pon has taken the helm of TG Thai Airways, I'd rather call it TG, uh, since December 4, last year. It's about just about 11 months now. He just told me that he's passed his first uh, six months assessment. Good for him. Uh, I don't know if he's going to pass through the second one or not, because this morning, Kun Akhom, our transport minister, just asked him to cut salaries. So I guess he's going to have to take out you know, one baht salary or something. Um, Thai Airways has always been the pride of this country. Of, of late, that has not been the case, I guess. I can say that from experience. Um, he has he has a really tough job. Twenty five thousand people, hundred plus aircrafts, hundred thirty. He said, was it hundred thirty aircrafts? He has to cut it down to ninety three or ninety something. All to be done by the end of next year, January one, two thousand and seventeen, is the deadline supposedly to clear his act, make the company profitable. This year, the company is losing money despite oil prices being at rock bottom when companies are supposed to make money. I guess he is going to tell us everything about what needs to be known about TG. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Kuncharam Pon to the podium. And he's going to use this podium here, so I'll have to move. Um, and then you can, uh, we'll uh, come back later on the, with the Q&A. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Umesh, um, for the introduction. And uh, well, uh, this is my 11 months. And uh, uh, I must say, the job here uh, it has been as expected. Nothing more, nothing less yet. Uh, uh, which means it's uh, um, obviously it's a tough assignment. Um, but today, let let me uh, brief you a bit on, on the background of uh, the aviation industry, the way I see it, and, uh, uh, and what caused uh, our problem, and what do we need to do to get out of it, and uh, well, that's what basically it. Uh, so the topic would be like the, the growth of the major uh, Factors such as the our economy, the ASEAN economy, tourism, the intense competition, uh, our competitor as far as the the, the countries surrounding us are moving fast uh, in uh, becoming a great hub, and what are the the government has been helping or hindering us uh, in. Um, uh, helping the national carrier uh, or not helping helping and the ASEAN especially the ASEAN open sky policy and uh, uh, at the end I would say something about uh, how we should be going forward and leverage on the strength of our, our environment uh, and uh, Thailand as a uh, geographic uh, 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 advantages so first of all, uh, 
Uh, these are the tourist uh, growth arrival to Thailand has been growing um, uh, in the 18 uh, percent. However, this is the entire uh, country. But uh, to Thailand, uh, there are two airports. The, the growth to Swanapum is about 17 or 16 percent. Uh, whereas the uh, Don Mueang is approaching like 40 percent per year. So the growth has been in the low cost uh, area and in the low cost hub of uh, uh, the Don Mueang airport. Now, if you look at the uh, this year, uh, normally Thailand will have some incidents and I don't know why you keep having incidents always during the high season. And in this case, uh, it started on the 17th of August. And as a result, the Chinese uh, incoming, at least from Thai Airways alone, dropped by 23%. From Japan, 7%. And then uh, October is less, but it's not recovering. Therefore, this high season is I must say a soft high, not, not uh, a really high. So again, uh, we, Thailand has been hit with um, uh, uh, a bad um, incident for our high season, uh, which is one of the only five engine uh, economic in the industry that has been moving, which is uh, tourism. Now, if you look at the... Um, uh, competitive point of view. Uh, initially, let's say Thailand, Singapore, or Hong Kong, uh, naturally, we are the place where mainly is the Asian hub, that every airline will have to stop somewhere around here. Um, why? Because at that time, the technology, I mean, you can only fly from, from Europe to Asia and you have to stop somewhere around here before going uh, towards Bali or uh, Indonesia or, or even Japan. But now the aircraft today, you can fly much farther. And therefore, there are new, the new emerging um, carriers like the Middle East with the technology happen to be uh, the center of the world, of the world aviation hub basically. Because from that uh, point, you can actually fly to every city in the world practically with a non-stop, with the existing aircraft, easily, economically. Whereas before, you can't. Now, if this is the case, then what happened is that the, uh, a lot of the traffic will be flying over our head, over Singapore, over uh, uh, less of a Hong Kong, but at least uh, the, the kangaroo route, they don't need to go through Thailand anymore. They can go from Europe to Dubai and go to Sydney with a one stop. Whereas before, you have to go to uh, Bangkok or Singapore and then Sydney from Europe. So, uh, and, and look at the, the flights, 18 daily flights and seven daily with Airbus 380s. And uh, this way, in the past, if you have a 50 cities in Europe, they normally go to the, the key cities in Europe and then go on Thai Airways or through uh, Lufthansa or British Airways or whatever. But now all the 50 cities in Europe, you can come to Bangkok through Abu Dhabi, uh, our friends there, uh, so uh, uh, from Etihad, and uh, so basically, the traffic now has changed from a lot of uh, the European carrier. If you notice, the European carrier almost doesn't exist in Suwannapoom Airport. In in some country that used to have a bilateral with us, end up Thai Airways just fly alone to that cities, but at the moment all the traffic are rerouted through Dubai or 
Abu Dhabi or Doha. Now, um, so basically Thailand is losing its position as the, 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 the hub of the, the Asia. As you can see, all the route, uh, you can go now through the Middle Eastern and you can go uh, anywhere. Now, on, on the bottom end, the short haul, we are sandwiched with a low-cost carrier. There are currently 34 low-cost carriers serving Thailand, and the growth is tremendous. Um, and in Swanapum Airport alone, believe it or not, we have uh, 800 uh, flights per day. Six years ago, in Don Mueang, it was zero. Today, 700 flights in Don Mueang. So it's almost as much landing in Don Mueang as in our, uh, our main airport. Okay. And uh, look at the Don Mueang growth uh, with the domestic passengers. Um, so basically, the, which is similar to the topology of the, uh, like the European. If you look at uh, Germany, like Lufthansa, the full service carrier like Lufthansa, they also have uh, stakes in the low cost carrier like German Wings. Now, German Wings operate from, let's say, Dusseldorf and Berlin. Now, whereas Lufthansa, which is a full service carrier, will work from Munich and Frankfurt, and those two are not connected. Therefore, basically, you, you have two separate markets. And in Thailand, that started to develop. So you have a market which Don Mueang as a uh, the low cost, and then Suwannapum will always be the main hub. But if you look at the, the strategy of the low cost airline, they don't use hub. They use something called base. Okay, so uh, I believe Ryanair has about 40 base in Europe. And many airlines has uh, eight base, 10 base, and each of the base, you have a point-to-point -point directly between all those base, and then the rest to the base. So there's actually, there's no hub, per se. And you can start to see that Asia start doing that. When you start to see from uh, Pattaya, right, which is uh, Utapau, to Chiang Mai, and to Phuket. So you, th you start forming the base. Therefore, if you ask that, does Thai Airways compete directly with Asia? No. We are on a totally different plane. And the base is they attract people who are going to fly point to point. We're never going to be having people fly from Pattaya to Krabi. Okay. But we will have London to Phnom Penh, London to Krabi. We'll have Rome to Manila. Now, those are the full service carriers. So those are our strategy. And, and, and those has to be the strength that we have to play with. Um, now, the milestone of the open sky. Now, l let's look at the open sky. In 2005, we start to basically start this uh, new era. And at the moment, uh, we are one of the very few country in the world, probably the only country, I'm not sure, definitely the only country in the world that allow the third party carrier from other country to fly into Bangkok and take our citizens to Heathrow Airport. There's no other country in the world that allow this except Thailand. So our open sky policy started in 2005 and we already gave everything to the other country. Basically, this is our natural resources. This is like a uh, summertime what is it, a concession, right? This is a concession. You come and you take our wealth to the other country. Now, the government have to rethink about this. And we also give to our uh, competitor in the Middle East to take Thai citizen to uh, Australia. Normally, 
the only one who can do this is the counterpart. London Bangkok is only British Airways and Thai Airways. And between Australia and Thailand will be the two parties, not otherwise. The fifth freedom will have to be negotiated uh, uh, in a reciprocate way, not one way. Now, for us to run a national carrier with certain disadvantages like this is like you're tying my hand and my legs. One of the evidence is that uh, we tried to negotiate with um, Korea at one point, tried to increase the, um, the flight from four to seven to LA, and we couldn't uh, because th there's no bargaining power left. We already gave all the cards away, basically. Right. So from 2005 until now, that's what has happened to the Thai aviation. Okay. So if you ask me, open sky, what's the impact to us? It can't get worse. It's already gone. I mean, we are, I'm not afraid of open sky because it's, everything has already have been given away. Uh, if anything, we should be able to gain from our uh, other countries around here, which may not have uh, given uh, all the, the national assets away. Okay, so now let's go to some of the advertisement a bit. Okay, uh, well, Thai Airways, we are still we are the full service carrier that. Uh, uh, we still position as the, the premium uh, carrier. We have Thai Smile, which is also a full service carrier. Um, and a lot of no such thing as those uh, um, that you have to buy things here and there on, on aircraft. So if you buy either Thai Smile or Thai Airways, um, everything is convenient, it's quite easy, comfortable. Um, and these are our uh, example of our first class cabin, the business class, and I must say the economy class, we must have one of the best and most comfortable economy class in the world because the, especially the seat with the pitch, we have the longest pitch, and every seat has a, a pretty good, uh, we call it IFE, which is the entertainment system. Um, therefore, if you look at our Density. Our density is much less than our friend uh, Middle Eastern carrier. If you ask me, the Middle Eastern carrier on the economy class is more of a lower cost strategy versus tireway. So if you want to go anywhere comfortable, definitely on economy is tireways. Um, but if you want to go at much lower price, you, if you take price as a priority, then that's probably the Middle Eastern uh, uh, carrier. Um, now this is for, for the long haul. Uh, therefore, if you look at this, if our product like this, then everything else in Thai Airways has to be coincide, has to be move along in the same strategy. But I must say that in the past, we have not done that. Because if you look at, if this is a product, who are we selling to? most likely a more time sensitive passenger, not price sensitive passenger. And selling to through where it should be, for example, more concentrated on internet. Now the problem with us is internet, we only get 13%. So that's one thing that you can recognize that we did some of the things not moving along with the rest. The channel doesn't, does not move along with our products. Um, we have a lot of groups, which is tourists, and the tourist class, the price are quite low, they are price sensitive. But our, our seat is not supposed to be that way. So basically, the sales organization has been sort of uh, evolving away from the proper uh, by the book uh, uh, in running an airline. So planning, which is this, versus 
the commercial are going in separate direction and, and uh, there's quite a few percentages that you can actually easily gain by adjusting it properly. Uh, and okay, the lounge, etc. So we're still catering at the um, uh, more of a high end, like the business class and so forth. However, if you come to Swanapum Airport, you notice that um, most business will fly, let's say, to Hong Kong and Singapore, right? Now, if most business people who come fr on Thai Airways from these two cities we realize that you either get on the bus gate at Suanapum or the gate which is far away. Now that's not geared towards the business class, uh, 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 catered to business people, right? So if you look at the airport strategy, the product and so forth, we're going in all directions, okay? So these are the main some example of the reason why we are uh, not quite where we're supposed to be. Anyway, so basically, and that's, those are all commercial. And now on the business class, um, we start to, some, once we identified, we, we already start to uh, do a lot of changes. Our service on the business class has dropped from Sky, uh, Skytrack point of view. It has dropped from number top five to now number 18. And uh, right now one of the initiative is uh, improving our business class service. So if anyone go to uh, Tokyo Narita on our 380, uh, please try it. And also today on the 380 to London, that's our new business class service with all day dining, etc. Okay, so give it a try. And this will be, uh, the start of uh, coming back to an airline for um, business, especially for anyone who wants to fly from Europe to uh, Thailand, uh, definitely it would be the most convenient way to fly, especially from the three city with the 380s and, and the other with good aircraft because you can get an uninterrupted journey to Thailand, okay? Um, and that's, uh, and comfortable, convenient, and uh, any service which is supposed to be important to uh, the customer satisfaction of the business people who start to uh, be adding uh, the Wi-Fi, etc. Uh, so uh, the customer segment are much more clearer on the business side, on more time sensitive client and much less on the price sensitive. And if we can stick to that, the tireways turnaround is not that difficult. Uh, question is just when, that's all, okay. Anyway, so the rest is up to you guys. Yeah, just Q&A, anything? Yes, uh, I think you're comfortable there, so <laughs> stay there, Cup. Uh, please, there's a, there's a mic on the, on the floor. State your name, your organization, as usual. Please do not uh, give long statements. We are here for Q&A. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. I'll interrupt if I see there's a statement being made. Thank you. Uh, hi, Marwan Markan, Marka journalist. Uh, you have a tall order to try and reduce your staff, which is like 23,000. I understand that Cathay Pacific has uh, a staff of 10,000 running a fleet that is almost equivalent to TG's fleet of about 100. Why is it that you need so many people to run this airline? It's almost twice the number that Cathay has. Uh, first of all, uh, you have to compare apples to apples because Cathay Pacific, uh, all the catering uh, are outside is by the subsidiary. So they don't count that. So first you have to count, but I admittedly that we have a lot more uh, staff, but not by two to one. Um, but in Thai Airways, uh, every staff are under Thai Airways, basically. So at least you can count them that they are all. However, in the traditional um, airline business now, they only um, 
count the people who fly an aircraft and, the ser and selling tickets and everything related to that. So anything else, they don't count as a, um, the core airline business, which means catering, cargo, ground handling, uh, what else? It, uh, and yeah, MRO, which is the maintenance organization. So some organization, if you take those out, then or if we take those out, then the number will be much uh, less also. But again, since we haven't re-engineered in so many years, um, there's still a lot of fat in, in, in the system. I don't have a clear number of how many um, headcount to reduce, and it's not a good idea to have a clear number of headcount to reduce. The better target would be 20% reduction in uh, uh, what do you call um, non fuel costs, which is for Thai Airways, uh, the base is 2014 is about 108 billion baht. So that's the base. By next year, 2016, it should be 20% lower than that. Can I interrupt? Uh, just non fuel cost. What do you what do you mean by that? I'm not a you know techno here. Can you just explain on that, please? All right. Uh, uh, is uh, salary, the maintenance, the aircraft, <coughs> aircraft uh, depreciation, selling, um, service on board. You know the, the the crew, the food, everything else except the fuel. And the fuel for Thai Airways is eighty billion. Yeah ballpark in 2018. So the, the total of 180 billion, about 100 billion, let's say, is the non-fuel cost. And that's, if we can get 20% down, we can easily make a profit. Eric? Yes, Eric Selden, Resource Media. Uh, one of the concerns uh, I think that I've heard and I've experienced myself as a passenger on Thai is the inconsistency in the service. And many, it seems that sometimes on, on flights that are going on routes that tie is not as, uh, as less competition, the service is either downgraded, uh, uh, flights are, are changed in terms of equipment, uh, what is provided on board is lacking one on the return trip as opposed to the outgoing trip. Um, how do you address the Thai's uh, efforts to try to maintain more consistency in service? Uh, sorry, what's about the return trip and not return trip? I, uh, I didn't hear. Often, uh, for instance, going, just in my case... Uh, food, the food. A food. Uh, okay. Sometimes there's no meals. Uh, uh, even on uh, uh, six to seven hour flights in uh, overnights or on shorter one to two hour flights in the region. Uh, and this was not how Thai reacted before. Not necessarily the size, there's no meal. All right. Well, uh, I must admit the, the consistency is our, uh, one of the key problems. And, and those are the, the, the service that we need to uh, do more on the QC and so forth. Um, I, I must admit that in some of the crew, I actually, most of the crew that I found was, was very good. Uh, not that I'm a DD, you know, because this I flew Thai Airways all my life. But I was told that the consistency is poor. And at the moment, we are installing uh, a lot of the new, uh, the way to do the proper feedback. Because anything you complain like this, in my mind, 100% of the complaint has to come and register on the system, and someone will have to take care of it. At the moment, uh, some of these procedures are not in place. Or, um, but anyway, if you have any complaint, you can always, uh, anyone can always uh, email to tgpresident at tireways.com, and that's, uh, I, uh, those will be forwarded to the right person. So consistency con uh, is a problem, and that's what we know, and that's what we're working on it. Um, the inconsistency in the aircraft, that uh, inherit, I was inherited with 11 types of aircraft. Um, 
I guess because we have so many types of aircraft, so our planning has great time in playing around with the schedule. And I must say, this is also another uh, evidence of we haven't properly go by the book. Uh, because if you go by the book, even though you have 11 types of aircraft, if you go to Hong Kong, you should only have two types. Go to Japan, two types. Chiang Mai, one type. But at the moment, unfortunately, with our existing uh, way that we, we are handling, we probably focus more on the load factor and the number of persons and uh, per flight and per time of day. So we actually tailor made to, to for the, the volume rather than the consistency. Now, as a result, the experience of the customer goes down. Because if we have 10 types and we only have one good type, if anyone fly one good type and the rest of the year he fly the bad type, then tieways will look bad. So actually, it's better off to have one route with all bad aircraft so no one complains about it because I've never seen any other and one good with good aircraft. And we fly to Hong Kong with uh, about seven or eight types. Fly to Tokyo about six or seven types. We're working on it, we're changing it. But by selling 42 aircraft, the consistency will be there. I'm selling 42 aircraft this year. We used to have 130 aircraft-ish. This year we going to have, uh, we already have 93 aircraft. Okay, so a lot of inconsistency and the aircraft that uh, either old or doesn't work or uh, uh, not uh, proper will be uh, is already grounded. Okay, and that's part of the reason why we have to take a lot of financial hits uh, of the past uh, uh, inheritance. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, my name is Naswadika, working for Expedia. Um, you said you were focusing on uh, your strategy on bringing the passengers from uh, Europe to Asia. I'd like to understand your strategy on uh, working with a travel agency in a global scale. What do you mean, like Expedia? Like, not just Expedia, but other players as well, in terms of global partnership or how do you how do you think you would bring the passenger from Europe to Asia how would you how would you do that by um, direct connect with with your website or working towards the travel agents well we uh, we just reorganized uh, in October so we have a clear uh, a division at certain segments so we have exactly what uh, what uh, the department to take care of the global uh, tourism. We have uh, a department who take care of the, uh, the maritime. What do you call? It? Yeah, yeah. But but basically, it's the the students, uh, the certain targets. Uh, whereas before, we just have a traditional agents and the internet. That's all. But uh, this time, we have a clear target of who are the actual. Uh, customer like corporate customer, you know, a global corporate customer. We never have. We had only corporate services. We service them, but we don't target at the share wallets. I mean, if if I used to be at, at a bank, at a commercial bank, <laughs> we know exactly what the share wallet of that uh, client. I mean, how much loan they're gonna do, how much transaction, how much fund transfer, how much forex, we know exactly or we can, we can um, forecast and we go after it and, and we never fail because we focus. But over here we did not, but now we have organization that actually start to focus on corporate, etc. and we'll start to adopt more of a, uh, what the banking sector uh, did, which I used to run that uh, in, in the banking, I used to run transaction service. I handle corporate, I handle SME, I handle retail, and we have totally separate team to do that and through different channels. The corporate for the bank, we have 85 sales to cover 2,000 corporate. But on the SME, we have 
the brands all over the country to handle 30,000. And on retail, we just use internet and the brands. So we know how to, we, we know what the segment and we know who to sell through. So we just need, we, what we are doing today is just make the Thaiway organization just like that and we start to focus. And I'm sure once we start to focus, we know who our customer is, then we know what they like, where do they buy, when do they buy, and actually the data, we already have it on our warehouse, but normally we don't, a lot of Thai company does not use it properly. Uh, but from the bank, it came from the bank background, we used lots and lots of data, so that's what we plan to do in the future. Thank you, Kun uh, Kampon. My name is Yusuf Abud and I'm from UBS. Um, I have uh, three quick questions. My first question is how, you're, how much are you confident in achieving your target by the end of next year, i.e. You, uh, you will be profitable uh, by the end of next year? How confident are you? Uh, and my second question related to the first question is how much we should expect restructuring cost going forward, how much you're going to book. And my last question is, as part of your financial restructuring, would you consider allowing a foreign partner taking a stake in Thai Airways, similar to what True Corporation did here? And I mean any foreign partner, including Chinese airline, for example. All right, uh, let's start with the last question first. The, uh, on the partnership, uh, first of all, we are listed uh, and the government only owns 53%, so there are 47 available, and most of them are retail. Okay, therefore, if anyone who wants to buy the stock, they can. Uh, however, if you want to be in form of partnership that, that uh, have a special arrangement or how many board seats, etc., et then uh, I guess they have to talk to the government first. Uh, uh, I'm not running that policy. So at the moment, my assumption is that at the moment, just be at a state-owned enterprise, but just fix it, okay? But after that... Um, Would you propose to the government this alternative to accelerate the process of restructuring? Well, um, I believe it has been in some of the past uh, strategy that one day we have to be uh, an airline like us we have to be uh, privatized uh, but again uh, that's not what I can say uh, but I must say if it's not a state-owned enterprise thing can move much faster but the thing is let's not talk about the what's not possible this year or next year. I'm sure between now and the end of next year, uh, it probably remain the state-owned enterprise. And uh, let's focus on how to turn around under this condition. And the first question I forgot, sorry. The first question is, how confident are you in achieving uh, your target by the end of next year, especially in being profitable? Well, I'm quite confident. Uh, first of all, um, our, this year, we have a lot of impairments one time from the 12 billion from an aircraft impairment and 3.7 billion from uh, MSP, the early retirement. So the two alone is 16 billion. But next year, as you ask, do we have any more restructuring costs? There are in the budget of two more billion, the MSP or early retirement, which uh, with the same ratio, if it's two billion budget, uh, the hit one time will be maybe about 1.2, 1.3 billion uh, in the plan. That's all we have. The rest is the operational. And please bear in mind that the fuel price for us will drop at least 30% a uh, few costs to us because this year, the entire year, we have been under the pricing that has been hedged 80% from two years back. 
But actually, we're not that bad compared to uh, to the similar full service carrier because they are all listed and we can see all all the number. How much has still uh, as a next year? Um, we have uh, quite a bit, but at, at low price now. But hedging low price, uh, not hedging the high price. Uh, but again, the cost will be dropping by about 30% compared to this year. Now, 30%, uh, that's a lot of difference. Um, Thank you. And also, one of the big problems we have today, this year, is our yield. Okay, uh, the revenue management is l less functional. As I said, we didn't go by the book. But with the new commercial team that came in in the past three months, we are starting to turn around quickly. Uh, but this will take about six months before uh, 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 thing takes effect. Because by the time we start and by the time the the passenger flies will be about six months. So uh, the yield for us compared to the average IATA, starting with the same reference point of 2005, today our yield is worse off by IATA by 7%. Now that's how much fat we have. So just think about it. If we don't need to be the best in the world, just catch with IATA. 7% you're talking about uh, out of 150 billion baht, that's 10 billion, 10.5 billion baht of additional changes. So, if you ask, uh, am I confident? I'm quite confident. Yes. Uh, yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Ming from uh, Ecomai, uh, an e-commerce blog in South Asia, and uh, I would like to ask about the digital strategy. Because now, I mean, research uh, showing that uh, business traveler they are switching to uh, to to using the low cost ally, and uh, so uh, Thai way more likely to compete directly with Asia and even uh, Singapore ally. They also have a strong digital presence, and at part I know uh, Asia they have uh, around more than uh, four million fans online, and they are very strong in the uh, internet space. Uh, so this is a very strong advantage for Asia because they, they can reduce the marketing cost and increase revenue strongly. So, so what is the digital strategy of uh, Thai Airway to, to gain the online market set? Thank you. Well, our uh, passenger growth is about, uh, of, of the Swanapum Airport is about 18% and for us it's similar. Now that's not a bad growth. Now, obviously, low-cost airline is 50% growth, but the 50% growth, to me, I consider that as a uh, someone who helping us expanding the market. Okay, so you move from other type of transportation to airlines. So if the markets are uh, much bigger, uh, it's our job to do what? Which is to do upsell. I mean, we have a better product. We have a uh, um, better proposal. So basically, it's easier to convert from a low-cost airline into Thai Airways rather than other transportation to Thai Airways. So to me, they help us expand the market. I mean, our passenger headcount does not drop at all. It's still increasing, but for them, they're increasing more. And we, we still have 39% uh, market share in Nok Air which has 20% uh, of uh, low-cost uh, uh, business. So we, we do have a stake in there, but we, we don't need to do it by ourselves. We, we have uh, uh, our affiliates, which I'm sitting on the board of director of Nok Air also. Uh, first, I'm asking about the digital strategy. Yeah, because uh, we are doing uh, everything on uh, regionally and in the regional level. The marketing is very costly, and usually the internet marketing can help to reduce a loss of cost. So, uh, what about the digital strategy of digital. Uh, Thai Airway? Yeah, because at part I see the our uh, fan maybe less than one million for example, and Asia more than four million. 
Yes. Um, for us, our uh, digital channel is only 13%. Our goal is to be 30%. Today, we have a, a, a quite an old engine, which we are start to uh, selecting the brand new engine to, to convert to, uh, which is a single platform uh, throughout the world, which is supposed to be similar to the rest of the world. Today, we have about 25 platforms throughout the world, which is no, no one does that. So, I mean, it's, to us, it's, 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 it's a no-brainer. I mean, we can easily uh, uh, close the gap uh, pretty soon. It would take uh, less than nine months just to have uh, the brand new engine with, uh, with the new promotion uh, in the same class as, as the rest of the world. But the thing is, we are working and competing with full service carrier. We're not, the system will never be similar to the, the low cost carrier one. Next, next please. Good evening. I'm Tan Hui. I'm from the Straits Times newspaper. I've got two questions. Uh, it has often been expressed that Thai Airways' performance is hampered by political interference, uh, that the people running the airline are political appointees rather than professionals per se. To what extent might that still be an issue now? The second question I have is, um, to what extent does the super board have influence over the way the airline is run now? First, the political. Actually, there's very little interference in my term. Uh, maybe one of the main reasons is the, all we do is we are cutting costs, we are reducing everything, and we are selling aircraft. I mean, there's just nothing. Uh, and so to me, so far, I have a pretty much hand-free as far as the direction interference from uh, political. Now from the uh, super board, the super board has a, a reform, uh, has a, an entity called Sokoro, I, I don't know what uh, the translation, but they're supposed to supervise us. Huh? Say oh, yeah. Anyway, so um, uh, that part is more of a, 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 an entity that follow up according to the plan. And uh, I believe it's quite professional. And the board appointees that uh, about half of our board, which come from the, the, the super board side, uh, mostly come from uh, professional from private sector. So that has helped us quite a bit. Next. Uh, good evening, sir. Um, my name is Tony Middleton. I'm uh, with FMI here in Myanmar. Um, one question uh, I have relates to the comments you made in the comparison with CAFE and the headcount and the non-core non aspects of uh, the organisation. Um, CAFE, uh, SQ and many others have divested themselves of things like ground handling, catering, um, a number of those others, even frequent flyer programs. Does your structure and your ownership allow you to contemplate this in your strategy? Yes, in the new strategy, uh, there are supposed to be four BU business units that we're supposed to be considering of, of uh, how to handle either 100% owned subsidiary or the JV with the others. So that will, should be finished and proposed the, the policy by the end of this year. And then next year will be start executing. Thank you. Any other questions? If, ah, okay, please. Uh, I feel like a singer <laughs> now. So my question is uh, more about the aviation sector in general. And I'm curious to know how would you reduce the human factor, you know, the pilots making mistakes <laughs> in the airline industry with the aviation uh, safety regulations. We know that you know it's raising concern uh, to reduce this, you know, the portion of the mistake from the humans, <laughs> rather than like you know leaving it to computers to run this. Like you know, we know the event with the German pilot. What happens? Like he 
actually had a suicide wish. Um, <laughs> like I was curious to know, you know, how would you make it more secure for the passengers to rely on uh, less with the humans, but more with uh, I don't know automation. Yeah. This is about well, the whole fear of flying. You know, uh, it's more general question which, rather than tire race. But I was curious to know how would you. Well, our, our focus is on the, the safety for sure, and uh, every incident uh, that you um, mention, uh, as soon as that happens, there are communicate from the uh, the rest of the world through uh, the the other safety agency like the IATA or Star Alliance has a safety commission, so they issue all the the, the new rule regulation and we have to follow uh, right away and we don't cut corners uh, in that part however I haven't heard any uh, specific of how to do that let, let's say go to all the computers no I, I uh, that may be just one of the strategy of some airline that they they want to try but uh, I don't think uh, there's any clear direction that the uh, machine is better than human, no. Next. Not yet. Anybody else? Hi, I'm Oliver from Thailand Business News. My question is about your Middle East competitors. Uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, uh, Middle East Airlines are now uh, main competitors for uh, Thai Airways on the European market. So. Um, and you also said that uh, low-cost airlines are not your competitors. Uh, what? Low-cost airlines are not your competitors. Your main competitors are from the Middle East. But actually, uh, where do you draw the line? Because uh, when you see that uh, routinely Etihad offers a round ticket from Paris to Bangkok for 500 euros, uh, it's low cost. So what exactly do you intend to do to to have your customer back? Those who who are not flying Thai Airways and who are flying Emirates or Etihad, what what, what measures uh, do you intend to? Well, to actually, I I told in my presentation that that the Middle Eastern carrier are the low cost carrier of the full service carrier, so we are on the same page, okay? And uh, but those are one stops. So we just need to have a, a one-stop strategy to compete with them, that's all. And for the low-cost carrier, um, they're on a different plane. Uh, they're on Don Myung plane, and they're not competing on the hub. So, but if you ask me, yes, uh, they do compete with our short, uh, short route. So all the point-to-point, -point, they are competitors. But we just need to stick to our strength, which is a hub configuration. And there are place for the hubs to, uh, uh, to play. Okay, but like, like you said, the, the Open Sky policy authorizes uh, companies like Emirates to take your passengers from Bangkok to Sydney. So, h how do you intend to compete with, with this? They, they are offering exactly the same service. Well, we just have to compete uh, um, more. more uh, uh, strongly, uh, at the moment we are not equipped uh, because our cost is not uh, as low. Uh, but we are driving it, so by the end of next year, our cost should be uh, in the range that we should be able to compete. Um, but again, we still have to rely on our geographic s strength. And actually, Thailand is still low cost base uh, uh, in, in a lot of ways. So we just need to utilize that more. Um, I think we have a uh, we have a good chance. And uh, if you look at Singapore Airlines, they haven't lost a lot of the traffic from Europe to Australia. Therefore, this is an evidence that if you compete properly, you can you can actually. And for us, I think we are our cost structure will be better than Singapore. Next. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, I'm Pan Sin, Hunter Kun, investor. Uh, so the first question is, uh, how is the Thai 
few hedging policy going on because of the last year, as I read your annual report, it said it's 18 months going forward for few hedging. So how is, how is it? Uh, is it going to change in the future or in this year? 18 months few hedging policy. Um, the few policy has been uh, uh, approved by the board and we have a clear strategy of what we will be going forward. Normally, full service carrier like us will always have a fairly uh, good size of the hedging. Um, but at this time, with similar type of hedging, the result will be the hedging at the lower cost now. Um, so uh, whereas before, it was hovering around 120. So by the similar strategy, we are stuck. But over here, the hedging now will ensure that the price will be around 40-ish. Now, the only problem is if it's going to 20. But anyway, most of the full service carrier is risk averse. Therefore, we need to hedge because our price does not jump up and down every day. I mean, most of our uh, passenger will book six months or nine months ahead. Therefore, we need to we need to hedge anyway because our, otherwise the price that we set today for nine months ahead if we don't hedge it today, we'll end up maybe losing that one. So basically, it's our structure of, 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 of our, our passenger. So if you just easily think about it, if, if every, for every aircraft, if people, people are buying 5% of the seats of the aircraft every month, 12 months going forward, then what you need to do is you just have to buy 5% every month. Therefore, if this is the case, then you have a pretty good size of hedging, but it's quite safe because you already sold the ticket at that price. So basically, you already locked the profit. So why do we care? Right. So our, the, the second question is, uh, how, how are you going to achieve your 20% reduction of the non-fuel cost next year? Because I, I saw your early retirement plan, it's just like 4% of total headcount. So it's just 4%, it's not. So how are you going to achieve 20% reduction next year? Very good question. But actually, as I said, I'm target 20% uh, cost, not 20% headcount, okay? Um, actually, there are a lot of things that we can do on the um, material that, that we use, either the perishable materials or food, etc the way we, um, for example, we have 11 types of aircraft. So we have lots of parts. We have uh, lots of group, ma many groups of pilots. We have to have uh, the maintenance technician who can serve 11 type aircraft and three different engines or all type of aircraft, right? So it's a multiplier effect. Now we drop the type from 11 to eight and eventually it will go to either five or four. So according to the study, uh, a complex network like us, a fleet like us, the cost is hi as high as 6% compared to the others. So if we are approaching five or four within maybe two years or so, uh, long term wise, we're gonna be cutting uh, a lot of the cost off. Now, as you may hear, the, the Ministry of uh, uh, Transport say that we still not uh, moving fast enough on cutting costs. Obviously, because some of the costs that we are cutting, they are fixed costs. Like we are closing LA, closing Johannesburg, clo closing Madrid, and so forth. Before you can close, you have to pay off first. We just uh, have to pay so many millions of uh, sovereign pay to to uh, the, the, uh, the employees there. Therefore, this become a cost on this year. But after this, the expense will just drop. And a lot of the rental, etc. cetera, there are like six months, nine months, uh, the, the contract. So when you break the contract, you end up with penalty. So the year that you take a drastic transaction, uh, your cost, you have a, a plus cost, therefore, it will sort of offset, then you actually, the people from outside won't know how much cost we're reducing because uh, some of the cost reducing has been offset by the, the one time that they keep bombarding. 
uh, through our book this year. But that's why we try to do everything fast in this year. Therefore, from next year onward, hopefully there's much less of a, a burden going forward. Uh, okay, so, our, so the, the last question is, uh, uh, how, how, is, uh, your, how is Thai Airways strategy for the China market? Growing. <laughs> Growing in, in, in many more secondary cities too, yes. Uh, we are applying for three more cities now and uh, keep on growing, yes. Thank you. Next, please. Hello, so thank you very much for coming to address us today at the FCCT. I am Jeffrey James. I work with, uh, with several organizations. Uh, I'm a journalist. I wanted to, to pick up on my colleague's uh, reference there to China. Um, and you were talking about how you were reaching out to China to different destinations. I'm interested how you would be if you picked up the telephone and it was uh, Air China or China Eastern or China Southern saying, we're here to help you financially. Can we do a deal? Can we do a financial deal, some kind of alliance? Are you open to some kind of approach from a Chinese entity or Chinese uh, carrier? Uh, that part I don't think is my position to say because those are the, not the mansion, those are the, the, the owners, uh, the, the, the ownership issue. But if you ask me, uh, we don't need money. Uh, if we need, we may need some some um, uh, uh, some of the technical know-how and some of the discipline uh, that would be uh, a more long-term uh, uh, sustainability that we we need to improve quick follow-up uh, question to you have you been approached by any Chinese entity no not yet uh, other than helping us uh, Leasing the aircraft, yes. Thank you very much, sir. The Hong? I've always been a for, former member of the club's uh, board and a former journalist. Uh, you mentioned briefly uh, a couple of times Nok Air and uh, Thai Smile. Uh, my question is that after that you focus m mostly on what seems the obvious policy, focus more on, on the high end. Uh, high yield seats, the business and, and first class. But do you think that at the same time you do that, you improve the, the, the high quality service? You should also invest maybe more in Nok Air and, and Thai Smile to, to be there? Are you going to split more of the business to them or are you going to invest more money in those two? Uh, how do you see the future of the three brand strategy basically? All right, very good question. On a Thai Smile, it's 100% owned subsidiary. So it is Thai Airways in a way, but uh, they are a, a lower cost operation, especially for the, the, the short routes. And so we running that airline more by the books. We only allow single type of aircraft, which is Airbus 320s. So all the short uh, haul eventually will turn all the 320s to, to the Thai Smile. Thai Smile is always the arms and legs of us, and the hub will be staying at Swanapum mainly. So if you fly anywhere, uh, regional or intercon, uh, intercontinental, then you end up uh, on a uh, Thai smile to the rest of the cities in Thailand, Indochina, ASEAN, or the southern of China. Uh, as far as Nok Air is concerned, they are on a different uh, plane, which is a uh, different airport altogether. To me, it's like a two distinct, a different network. Uh, so for them, um, we'll be cooperating more on uh, leverage, leveraging uh, the similarity in the, um, negotiating with uh, the other partners on whatever you know, the, on the service, on the um, maintenance, etc. But they still run as a low-cost airline strategy, which is a point-to-point. -point. Okay, so we'll be supporting them to grow in the Don Mueang and the, in the low-cost plane. And just a quick one on your past at the head of the, the stock exchange. What is tougher to deal with, air turbulences or market turbulences? 
I think as exciting. Uh, the, the major difference is that uh, at Stock Exchange, uh, we always make, uh, we always make uh, a lot of money. Um, and uh, so uh, most of the time, uh, what, we'll be, uh, what we have been doing is, is interacting with the rest of the industry. I mean, the Stock Exchange drives the entire industry like the brokerage industry, we, 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 we increased the number of investors and we gone through uh, driving all the 580 listed firm and try to lift them on the, let's say, corporate governance or the uh, uh, Dow Jones Industrial Index, that type of thing, uh, not not index, the Sustainable Index, the SI. Uh, so very little of work of driving within the SET, but we are driving the rest of the industry. And it depends on how far we want to drive, I mean, how fast we want to catch up with Singapore or take over Singapore or whatever. But on Thai Airways, most of my time uh, looking inwards and fixing whatever the 25,000 uh, people and so many organizations within. So it's, uh, it's just different animals, I guess. Please. Hello, Marco Weigang from Amadeus IT Group. Uh, I had a question on the three brand strategy, which you 90% answered already. I just had a follow up question. Uh, what you alluded to, does that mean that uh, Thai Smile will pull out of the point to point flights from Don Muang and support, be 100% based in Suvarnabhumi to support uh, the mainline business? Uh. That was a history in that of why we go to, to uh, uh, Don Meung. And at the moment, uh, we, uh, we still expand the, the network in Suvarnabhumi. Now, as soon as aircraft uh, are full here, that we need aircraft, then we'll be pulling back from, from Don Meung at the moment, yes. Okay. Thank you. Lut Simatsik, uh, Asian Trails, good evening. Two questions, please. When I'm at the airports in Don Wang, I see many Thai International Airbus 340 stand around. How soon you think you'll be able to sell them? <laughs> we are working hard on it. <laughs> but I, I must say it's much easier now than six months ago. Now that the interest in, in people in buying the even 340, 600s, believe it or not. So uh, we're pretty close to, to making a deal. Yes. Okay, second question. But uh, the 500 would be tougher. The, th the, the four, I bus 340, 500 is, is a bit tougher. Thank you. Uh, the FAA came to audit Thailand, Thai DCA. You were the only airline flying to America. So since you decided not to fly there anymore, is it of any concern to Thailand that the FAA comes to audit Thailand? Or should we not care because nobody flies there? Of course we have to care because the, the FAA um, is, uh, uh, is the one who set the standards. It is one is uh, an is inspector with a similar standard with the, the world class like the European. Therefore, if the FAA f find out that we are not uh, up to standard, then automatically the other country will drop us right away. Therefore, uh, there'll be uh, a major problem with uh, the European for sure. Therefore, we cannot uh, afford to fail on the FAA. Okay, thank you. Next. Hopefully, I'll get a chance okay. to ask a so question as well. But yeah, hopefully, it uh, might be the last question for you tonight. I'm not sure. I just wanted to build on the uh, gentleman's point before about consistency of service on on, on uh, Thai Airways flights. Um, <clears throat> I know personally a lot of uh, Thai nationals who work on a lot of the Gulf Airlines that are, you know, really are seriously competing with your business. But a lot of these crew try to come back to Thailand, and um, obviously they they face a lot of. Um, institutional barriers to say joining Thai airlines to, to continue their careers here. I'm wondering whether you would consider reforming the way Thai recruits its cabin crew to um, take on some of these more experienced um, 
Thai national staff to run some of its routes in Thailand to provide uh, probably a more consistent and better quality service in line with the Gulf Airlines that are attracting more and more of your clientele? Uh, attracting who, the Thai national who are working for other airlines. M more mature crew working for other airlines coming back to Thailand to resettle who face institutional barriers to, do to joining Thai cabin crew because usually of their age or the fact that their history with another aircraft they normally get cut from even being considered for working for Thai airlines, be it Air Asia or be it TG? But if we're at the point that we need more crew, we may be thinking about that, but at the moment it's the other way around, so <laughs> I don't think that's the truth. It's asking as a passenger because I noticed the difference in service between Thai crew working for, say, Emirates and Thai crew working for, say, Thai Airways. It's, it's normally Emirates is better, uh, with, the, with the exception of Hanoi, which is uh, your, your crew are very, very good, I must say. I, I, I strongly believe that the consistency can, can be fixed, and, um, uh, and that's what we're working on it. For example, some of the some of the cut we made when we, we reduced the, the cost in the past was that uh, sometimes we cut the, the onboard inspection crew. Therefore, this is a key uh, um, uh, success factor in making the crew consistent. Okay? So if you cut, then, then there's no feedback uh, right away to, to the crew. Therefore, we, we are reinstalling. Uh, uh, this type of uh, proper appraisement, uh, the performance management, etc. So, it's our own doing that that make the, the 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 inconsistency happen. So we just need to fix the right thing. But I think uh, most Thai crew have a good DNA for service, and it is, has been proven in in the past. Yes. Can I? Oh, there's one more question. I don't want to keep everyone. Sorry, uh, just to follow up on some of the comments that you made. I'm Kenji Kawasi from Nikkei. I'm a journalist. Um, you, did you really mention that uh, your cost structure will be better than Singapore? Singapore Airline? Um, if that's so, when is this that you're talking about? Well, that's my inspiration. Okay. Any specific timeline that you're talking about? Three years down, five years, or how many years? I'm working on it. I'm okay. 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 And then another thing is about the... Um, who, who ever have approached you before the other airlines? You said no Chinese airlines have approached you. And then you also mentioned that, that you're not looking for money. You're looking for something else. That means you're not looking for Chinese, I guess. Which airline are you looking for? If they want to hit your knock on your door. No, no, no. That, that's not true. What I'm saying is that at the moment, we're doing it on our own. But if uh, the question is uh, uh, if we need partner, uh, the question is, uh, do we need money? At the moment, money is, is not, not an, op, uh, an object. The problem is the, we need to go to be the world class fast. And to get to the world class fast is basically the know-how, the technology, and the discipline. So uh, if anyone can give us better in that, uh, it may not need to be on the, the, the main carrier itself. It could be our business unit either the catering, either ground handling, uh, anything. Because at the moment, I feel that there's an efficiency gap that we have. Therefore, in, in order to improve efficiency gap, you, need, uh, you just need uh, the best practice in, the, in, in, in managing, in running the business. So that's a know-how, that's a system, process, etc. And that, that's not the money. Okay, you know, a lot of people before you uh, weren't able to turn around this company. How come you are confident that you are able to do it? Well, if you look into detail of what the root cause and what are the, the uh, additional gap that we can improve, I mean, it's everywhere. But the thing is, the key is, the execution. I mean, did you hit the nail on the head? Uh, the only way is you have to to roll up your sleeve, go down the ground, and actually dig down to what the root cause, and you just fix the root cause. Then it is there. I mean, I can tell you that any strategy, that any plan, okay, 
can easily not working just because no one can execute exactly what uh, the or even 80% of what the plan. So entire way is the same thing. You just need to roll up your sleeve and just just get it out. Just just uh, do things properly. You just have to to understand exactly where the number is, what actually caused it, and that's what I've been working in the past nine months. I mean, just dig down to the the root cause. I mean, if I'm hovering around thirty thousand feet in a hundred years, you can never fix the airline. But if you go and dig deeper to the key operation that that uh, and see how all the uh, the the system actually work, uh, or the process actually work. You find out that there's a lot of things you can do. For example, is um, on the maintenance. We have four thousand five hundred technicians, but we used to have one hundred thirty aircraft. Now we have ninety three aircraft. Why do we have the same number of people? But the thing is. How many shops are there? If this is a garage, there's very few garage in in Asia and Southeast Asia. But there's so many planes and so many cars around. It's very easy. I mean, just just uh, turn the technician into the the right skill, which is not difficult, and then just get a lot uh, more client coming in. If the client coming in, then all these costs of the the excess headcount. Will be borne uh, born by the outside customer, and that's a way to reduce the, the cost of tire ways because all these costs today are dumping on tire ways. So, and we, this is a growing market, and every partner in the world that that do the MRO talk to us today that they want to do a JV on on, on MRO. Okay, so now we just uh, try to select uh, which one and to which service we may be doing it. So to me, on, on the maintenance, which is the highest cost of us other than uh, personnel and fuel, which is uh, 22 billion, to me, if you can get 30% or 40% just serve the rest of the, the aircraft around here in, in Asia, then the cost will be gone from tire ways. So it's not difficult. It's a very growing market. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kunjaran uh, uh, Pond. As an MC, I think either we take the first question or the last question. Can I have the opportunity to take the last question? It's in two parts. One is your, your, your stubborn child. Uh, actually, Larong, you should come back as a journalist. You asked both my questions. Uh, as a as a your stubborn child, Nok Air, they offer free Wi-Fi on their aircraft. Whereas for you, I was in Korea last last week, and for 10 megabytes, I think they were charging me 12 dollars or something. Whatever the case was, I was like, whoa, that's amazing. Actually, when it used you to be 14 something. Oh, thank God! Thank you for lowering <laughs> it. But idea. yeah, uh, when are you going to offer something like that to us? And my second question is something like the wrong ass. You have you have a Harvard degree. You have worked as a very senior executive at SCB, Siam uh, uh, Commercial Bank. You were at the SET, Stock Exchange of Thailand, and you're now heading Thai Airways. If you had to s pick one job, which was the toughest one, or which is the toughest one, or which is the most challenging one, which one would you pick on? <laughs> Two questions. Free Wi-Fi, please. And <laughs> the the new promotion will start in 1st of December, and if you fly uh, first class, it's free. <laughs> we're journalists, we're journalists, FYI. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the, the toughest job uh, I must, be, must be the, the Thai Railways. <laughs> no, I was kidding. Well, I guess among the three, so the, the the internal organization Thailand is the toughest, but uh, to manage the industry, the SET is the toughest because you end up having to uh, 
communicate uh, and uh, manage all the way from the uh, uh, the authorities, the uh, education, the uh, listed firm, uh, the international brokerage, the local brokerage is 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 much. Uh, um, variety of uh, of work and it's seven days work. Taiways maybe six days. Uh, About hundred percent has been offered there. Anyway, let's give a round of applause to Kuncharan Pond for being with us. Thank you. Hopefully he comes back soon. And best of luck in your quest to fix TG. Thank you very much once again.